Hello everyone, I have spent the last few months playing around with Bruce Fimmer and in this video I will be sharing to you some of the things that I've learned. I'll tell you the devices that seems to work best with it and the things that I've enjoyed using and even some of the bumps that I have hit along the way. So let's get right in. So I tested the Bruce Fimmer in three devices. The first one is the Lilygo T embed. The second one is the M5 Stick C Plus 2. And the last one is the M5 Stack Card Pewter, which is this one. And out of all of them, I tell you to get this, the M5 Stack Card Pewter. Because first off, the Lilygo T embed isn't really designed to do this kind of thing. It uses this wheel to move through the screen which is isn't really great and the current firmware the power button isn't really supported doesn't work the m5 stick c plus 2 now has a problem with storage unfortunately it doesn't have a built-in sd card slot so you need to get an extra part if you want to do a lot of stuff with it also it doesn't have a keyboard so you'll have problems renaming the files easily. So that's why I have recommended the card pewter. And it has a built-in SD card in it, as you can see here. And it has a keyboard and a special connection spot, the Grove and this one. And with the Grove, you can easily connect different types of modules like this coming from the M5 stack without having to figure out complicated wiring like you do with normal pins. Now, out of all the cool things that the Bruce firmware can do, the Wi-Fi stuff really blew me away. I've never seen anything like the clone Wi-Fi plus the evil portal combination. And I don't even think that the Flipper Zero has that functionality. It also has a built-in way to connect to other computers. So things like, let's see, your Raspberry Pi. You can SSH or Telnet to it. And this means you can use a little device, this device as a remote control to do more powerful pen testing tasks remotely on something like this portable Raspberry Pi that you have and the way that it does the Wi-Fi attacks like de outing kicking people out of Wi-Fi and sending out fake Wi-Fi signal like the beacon spam is really really well done if you have used something similar or the Marauder firmware this will feel pretty pretty similar Okay, one big thing that I have learned from this project is that what is a microcontroller and what are the modules for. Now, I get why those this pin, GPIO pins from the Flipper Zero are so useful. I learned that microcontroller like the ESP32 that is found on this card computer is like a tiny computer chip that even has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into it. I also now understand why there are different modules that you can buy and things like NRF24, CC1101 doesn't seem so strange to me anymore. And this project even gave me a small task where I get to solder things on a PCB board or a circuit board after trying them out on a bread board first which is something that i really really wanted to learn how to do now there will be some issues that you will encounter and let me share to you how you can troubleshoot all of those now first sometimes there will be some features that will have bugs or will not work. You simply have to flash an earlier firmware and try again. A sample of this is the FM feature, which still have a bug up till up to now. And you would have to try to flash the firmware version 1.5 just to make it work. Second, there will be a time when the feature you're trying will crash the device and will cause an infinite boot loop there's a fix for this, you just have to refresh the firmware. 
And third, there may be some attacks that will not work anymore because simply they are outdated. An example of this is the Bluetooth spam. Most of the Android and iOS phone have already patched this and most likely will not. Lastly, the people in the Discord channel for this have been really, really helpful for me the whole time I have been trying this out. Some of them even know me from my video, which is really nice. Whenever I had questions, especially when I was struggling with the wiring stuff because I'm still learning, they will answer really quick. And they were also really patient and it's explaining things to me which I really appreciate. So if you're thinking about trying this yourself, I really recommend joining their chat group, the Discord group, and I'll put the link down below. And all right, that wraps up my thoughts about the Bruce Firmware. If you're curious, I'd put all the important links down below, including the Discord channel. And let me know in the comments if you decide to give it a go or if you have any other questions. Always remember, keep on hacking my fellow hackista.